Let's look in this video how we can use visual analysis. I'm just going to start up a very basic beam analysis. It'll be a beam with a cantilever. And I'll walk you through some of these basic features here. Okay, so when you start up visual analysis, this is for version 8, of course, it looks pretty much like this here. Then some of the basics that you want to look over before you go into anything is what kind of analysis you do. So first of all, you have to look at the project manager. That one's on the left here. This is where you can change and modify a lot of settings. This is a really great tool. So if you look here, right up on top is structure type. At this point, you want to find out whether you want to an analyze a plane truss, uh, which is a tr truss in 2D, or a frame in 2D. This Frame setting means basically that you can also have rigid joints, not just pin joints. A plane truss assumes that there are only pin joints, and you can only load your truss at the joints. You can't um, enter member loads. That's what you can do at a plane frame, of course, and you can always analyze a truss in plane frame as well if you want to. I'll show you that later. That has to do with member releases. Space truss is the same in 3D, and space frame is a frame in 3D. And what you need to um, know with the difference between 2D and 3D, or a plane and space, is that 2D is um, doesn't require any kind of um, supports in the third dimension, basically into this um, view here. Space would need supports in the third dimension as well, so uh, usually the best approach is if you analyze something in 2D anyways, like a truss that looks you know flat on the screen here use plane and only if you do a full 3d analysis go to space all right so since we're looking at a beam we're not looking at a truss we have to use plane frame right here because that's how we can analyze bending all right so here everything is set up nicely there are a bunch of other options here that you might want to look through the next um, set of options is the grid you can actually go ahead and sketch members right now, um, right on the screen here. But if you want them to snap to anything that makes sense for your case, you might want to adjust this to one feet, two feet, whatever makes sense for you. I'm just going to leave it at two, but this is where you would adjust that. Then the next thing that you want to double check before you get going are the units. So if you go to the edit menu and project units, you get this dialog. and this is a collection of a whole lot of different units uh, and unit systems, and you can use whichever one you want, and it doesn't matter. You can actually switch in between from one unit system to another. But um, this is where you would make sure everything is just the way you want it, and if you need them customized, you can customize every single um, of these units individually. So I'm happy with that. My system is set up. I'm ready to go. The way you start um, any kind of analysis is in model view down here. You see there is there are some, of course, like 3D view things happening here. So you can pick the one that you want. We're in plane frame, so we want to be in this front view. And then in model view, I can add my structure members. And you see up here already, the drawing mode right now is uh, set to drawing members, which is bars. Um, any kind of uh, linear members. Then you can also use plates, which is uh, 2D plates like walls and concrete slabs and the like. Um, areas, I'm going to go over later, are really useful if you have a distributor load and you want to distribute that load to individual members, then you just draw an area and load that area. You can also use cables right here. Um, you can also draw nothing. <laughs> this is when you want to prevent you from drawing stuff um, accidentally. And then you can, of course, go into individual nodes and so on. Somewhere there is also a spring. Yeah, you can also add springs right here. Uh, spring support, basically, under, under a node. All right, so the way that you set something up is very simple. I'm just clicking right here. I'm going to make a, let's see, a 10-foot long beam right here. And this is only um, a part of my beam. So I'm going to have a wall here or a support and another support here. And this beam 
has a field, but then has, let's say, a four foot overhang. So the way you do that is that you um, have to create what looks like two members, two linear members, with all of these three nodes here. And um, since we're in plane frame analysis, the most important thing to realize is that everything is rigidly connected in frame analysis. So even though there's a node here, this is a continuous beam unless I were to release any of the members at this node. So this is just a very long member and it actually doesn't matter how many nodes there are in between. What's kind of convenient with this node is that I can use it now to apply a support. And you can see this very easily if you highlight a node on the project manager, you see support and then you can pick whatever makes sense, of course. Um, I'm going to make my um, pin support on the left, and I'm going to put a roller support on the right. So roller, of course, only supports in the y direction. There's no x um, direction. Then I'm going to go over here to the left node, and I'm going to, you can actually go here too, <laughs> and select pinned, which uh, it gives you an x, restraint and a Y restraint. And whenever you um, apply these kind of supports, this node is not going anywhere in that direction. And what you're also getting is a reaction. Okay, so at this point I have my member set up. All of these guys. I have the node set up. And when you highlight a member, you see in the project manager already what kind of shape it is. This is now a, a steel shape, W16 by 26. Just by default, I can change this to anything, and I'll go over material assignments a bit later. All right, so now all of the model is set up. Now, of course, I need loads. And in order to um, have loads in my model, I have to look at this drop-down right here. You see there's already a D. And what happens is that the material weight of the structural member automatically gets added to D, unless you change that, of course but that is something you um, automatically get, so you don't have to change, uh, add that at all. Now, if I want to have a live load on this, I have to switch this to L. You see on the left here, it tells me that there's nothing in that live load container already. So now I can highlight both of these beams. You can also do it separately, but this is a convenient way to doing it. And then there are different ways to um, adding a member load. You can do it using the toolbar button here, you can right click on it, whichever you want. Then when you're in here, you have to make sure that this goes into the right load case. So this is the live load case. We want to have a uniformly distributed load, but you see here already there's a lot of different loads that you can apply here. The direction is important. Um, force Y means we're going vertically in this direction. Uh, local means if I have an inclined member, then the global unit system is up-down and the local is perpendicular to the inclined member on projected member length as to do with snow loads, for example. So now then I can pick some kind of a load. Uh, let's pick something. Minus is important because positive Y is up, negative Y is down. And I can say OK. And at this point, I do have my entire beam ready. I have loads on here. You can always highlight them and go back into the project manager to change things, if you were to change the magnitude, for example. And now everything is ready for analysis. It's always a good idea to go up here and click on Check Model for Errors. It's not defined as a space frame. likes to complain. But oops, it it doesn't matter <laughs> because this uh, works perfectly well as a as a plane frame as well. So you can click on analyze now, or you can do what I just did. You can click on result view that will analyze it if visual analysis is able to analyze it. So if um, there is any kind of um, structural problem, for example, you forgot your supports and this beam would fly into a nowhere land, um, then it would not analyze basically. All right, so this is how you set up a problem. I'll go over results in another video. 
but you'll see here already model view result view um, those are uh, your, your your main um, tabs that you're going to work with